Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you how I made my own API 102 breakout boards. It's being used on more and more Adafruit boards and just in general in this whole maker community, it's becoming more and more popular because it's a very small LED. It's very smart. So you just need, you have a data pin and a clock pin and it basically has a little chip inside that, that does the rest for you and you can daisy chain them and everything. Uh, basically a better NeoPixel, you know, the NeoPixel was uh, or is based on the WS2812 or 2811. Um, this one here is, is even smaller. But anyways, it's just another RGB LED and uh, it's not the cheapest around, but yeah, it's becoming more and more popular just because it's so small. And uh, as you can see here, this is the uh, just some itsy bitsy board. I just pff, went to the Adafruit side and picked one. And there you can see it, That that's the one. Adafruit likes to call it the dot star micro LEDs and they are tiny, like really, really tiny. This is the 2020 size, so you can see it here. So it's just two millimeters by two millimeters, more or less. And um, yeah, they are not cheap. You can see here $6 for 10 pieces. That's that's a lot. Uh, I bought mine from AliExpress. They were uh, cheaper, but um, as of right now, they're kind of kind of expensive. These LEDs are also available in a uh, bigger size like this. This is the 5050 package. Yeah, you can get them a bit cheaper in that package. And as you can see, uh, there are already breakouts board, uh, ba breakout boards available for that one. But I wanted the breakout board for the 2020 because the 2020 is becoming more and more popular and I wanna, I wanna see it, I wanna use it, I wanna try it out. And I couldn't find a breakout board for it. And so I made my own, right? And I used Easy EDA for that. Easy EDA is a pretty simple to use online um, yeah, PCB design software, I guess. Um, and here you can see you can create different projects. So I made one project for the APA 102 breakout board. I can open it. You can design the, yeah, here's the PCB design. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You just, you get three pins on one side, three pins on the other side, ground VCC, and then of course, data in, data out, clock in, clock out. Here is the schematic, also pretty simple. It's just the LED itself and the two uh, three pin headers. It's pretty simple to use this software. Uh, you can click on libraries here and it's open this window. And so I just search for APA 102. And I was lucky that they have it, they have it here. And here is the 102 2020 package size. Um, I'm not sure which one I use, there's another one, but uh, they all work, they all work. So you can just place them on your schematic and then, then work with that. And yeah, uh, despite that, it's just like your other uh, design softwares pretty much, but it works in the browser. It's, I think it's great to getting started. Uh, it's not something you wanna design like your complicated uh, new big projects in, but if you're just getting started and you wanna learn like the basics of uh, PCB design, you can use that. I mean, it's a pretty powerful tool. Um, and what I really like about it is that I don't have to install any software. I don't have to install uh, hundreds of libraries like on Eagle. Um, it just works. The search is pretty straightforward. I can pick and place my parts and I can share my designs. So I think right now this is still private but um, I would put a link in the description for this project and you, then you can open it on Easy EDA and you can see that and you can edit it and you can uh, modify it and you can get the Gerber files yourself because that's the next step, right? If you have your design ready, uh, you have to convert it into a PCB layout. Look that all the things are arranged properly. Once all that is done, you can click here on the top Generate fabrication file Gerber. All right, please save your file. Okay, I clicked something, so I have to save again. And um, there, there you see already a preview. And you can go to JLC PCB directly. You can just, you can download the Gerber files and order it from whatever company you like. This whole thing is for free, but you can also uh, click here, order at JLC PCB and get your PCBs. This is what I did. Uh, JLC PCB um, is sponsoring this video. 
So I just want to show you real quick how this whole thing works. So as you can see, uh, it's already uploading it automatically because I use it from uh, EasyEDA directly. Otherwise you have to click here and upload your Gerber files manually. Uh, yeah, you can choose some things here. Here you can choose um, order together with a stencil. Now, uh, I, I would actually recommend that for something like this. Uh, we will go to that later. I ordered it without a stencil first. I wasn't really thinking about it, but I would recommend that. But uh, more, more on that later, what a stencil is and all that. Uh, of course, that costs more, but you can get 10 PCBs for just $2. You can see it here. A few weeks later, I received mine. I did I did order them on my own. JLC PCB didn't sponsor them to me because at that point I was just trying if this whole project is working out, right? Uh, I ordered 50 PCBs. Yeah, they look pretty well. The quality is absolutely fine. I, I can't find anything that could be wrong here. And so I went and saw that the first of them. I never saw that these teeny tiny LEDs or, or just, I never saw that something such small. So what I did, my, I, I knew my project is working, right? The LEDs were working with an example sketch and I thought, dang it, I need a stencil. So I went back to JLC PCB and here you have a tap uh, SMT stencil and then you can upload your Gerber files and order a stencil. Now I had to buy this little thing here, a tin snip, um, which is basically a fancy scissor to cut um, um, this, this metal um, stencil. That is the whole stencil, just for these tiny, teeny tiny little holes. Now in retrospective I have to say uh, maybe I should have made a stencil for like um, for like more than one uh, PCB because there's a lot of space here to put more because I have to cut this uh, smaller. Alright, either I'm terrible at cutting or I'm doing something wrong but it's probably both. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a pain to cut this this because this this can be dangerous, right? The the edges can be very very sharp and you can easily cut yourself All right, I believe just the first cut was the uh, hard one um, the rest went pretty fast now and, and easy um, Yeah, this is this is what I've left over now. It's still Relatively big, but I don't want to cut it smaller because as you can see like I want to still be able to hold it uh, with my hands. Yeah, a lot of waste, but I believe this is the smallest stencil JLC PCB offers on their website. Uh, maybe you can see it here, uh, the edges, they have like a special texture, I, I, I don't know. Um, but uh, that way they are not that sharp. So here where the cutting didn't went very well, you have very very sharp and dangerous corners and you can easily cut yourself open um, and yeah with this uh, if you cut properly with this thing then that shouldn't happen but yeah let's go to the soldering all right before I start soldering um, so what you really want to have for such a tiny project like this is well of course the stencil it will help a lot uh, but I mean okay it's not really required uh, I did solder some of the PCBs already without a stencil here is one it did not go very well, I have to say that, because the pads on these tiny PCBs and, and, and tiny LEDs, they are they are just too small, really. You you get solder bridges basically guaranteed when you try to solder this. Uh, and yeah, because this is such a tiny SMD soldering, yeah, a stencil helps. You want to have tweezers to hold the 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 components, and uh, of course you need a solder paste. Uh, because yeah, with a regular soldering iron and 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 solder that this this is impossible basically. Uh, so you want to have solder paste, you want to have uh, some flux, uh, and you want to have a hot air station. This is a pretty basic one, um, but it will do the job. And then of course your components, which for me is just the LED and the PCBs. So um, without a stencil, you would just take your solder paste like this and you would put it on the pads and put the LED on right put the LED on then apply some hot air and hope that there are no so uh, no no solder bridges or anything um, with the stencil the idea is that you take the PCB you take the stencil you put it on top and you have want to have it aligned perfectly 
which is a bit hard through the camera here. Yeah, I think now I got it. Then apply the solder paste. Then remove the stencil very, very carefully. And then you should only have solder paste on the pads, on, on each pad and not in between or anything. Because you really want to avoid solder bridges with that. Alright, I hope you can see it. I just applied solder paste with the stencil and uh, it works pretty well except on one of the pads there is basically no solder paste. So uh, I have to try to get that on manually. I did apply some solder paste manually and you can see it's it's too much. It's not it doesn't look very good. Um, yeah, this this is why the stencil is there, but it should be good. It's not touching anything else So let's just put the LED on and try if, if it works All right, I just sorted the first PCB and it went very well I just uh, put the LED on very very carefully very very slight. I didn't push it in or something uh, I applied the hot air that you can still hear in the background and Yeah, I, I used the tweezers like this to keep the LED in place because yeah with the hot airflow it might just run away you know uh, you have to just trial and error a bit try trial and fail um, but that's that's SMD soldering you you just have to learn it now before you uh, can use the stencil again you have to clean it at least in my case because otherwise I just have these pads right and they need to be clean otherwise I can't see uh, if I'm at the right position uh, but yeah, what I just did is uh, I used I used the tissue and and this brush and I just you know cleaned it from one side and the other side and um, yeah, there are probably better ways to do this, but um, this works so whatever. All right, I hope you can see it, but all the uh, holes in the stencil and where the pads are are filled with solder paste now. I used this little pin to um, yeah move the solder paste over it. Uh, works pretty well. Okay, it went very well. It looks like there is solder on all the pins. This looks way better than the first one. Alright, so um, I have four PCBs sorted now. Um, some of them better, some of them worse, but they should all be fine. Okay, so I have all the uh, PCBs sorted with the pins. Right, and I put it on a breadboard and now I will connect it to an ESP32. Now, okay, before we go going to upload an example sketch, you of course have to connect the different LEDs. So the first thing we have to do, of course, is connect the VCC to 3.3 volt and the ground to ground. Now, um, the next thing is here I have two pins going one to D in and one to C in on the first LED. This is data input and clock input. So this will be the LED we connect to the ESP and the other LEDs uh, will be connected to that first LED so we don't have to connect all of them to the uh, ESP. These LEDs are pretty smart so what we have to do is connect D out here and connect it to D in on the next LED. Right? Same goes for C out. connecting to C in and so on and we do this for all of the LEDs and then we have them uh, connected to each other and we just need to connect these two pins alright now this looks a bit like a wire jungle but all of the LEDs should be connected now and I just opened the uh, Arduino sketch that I found online and it tells me that the clock pin is connected to 22 now I have to check the clock pin is the green one to uh, 22 that is here and the data pin is 23 now of course you can uh, change that in the code but I don't wanna experiment yet just wanna connect everything and see if it works right that's good so the first LED is working for some reason the uh, the chained LEDs are not working so I have to investigate that Hey, it's working. All the LEDs are blinking. Nice. So the breakout board is working. Uh, I'm not sure now why they are blinking blue though. 
Alright, so since the video is already that long, I cut out the part where I was trial and erroring over the Arduino code. At the end, I just used the latest version of the Fast LED framework. I will link that and I will also link my uh, code for this setup. It's basically the milling example with a few changes so I can test my four LEDs that I have on this breadboard on pin 22 and 23. So if you use different pins, then you have to change that. But yeah, it's pretty much working now. The work has been done. And the last thing I wanted to do is make more of the PCBs and put them on Tindy for a few bucks. However, I don't have the time right now, maybe in a few weeks. If you want to follow me on Twitter at Spacehoon, then you will be notified whenever it gets on Tindy. But yeah, thanks for watching and if you're interested, check out JLC PCB. I'm very glad they sponsored this video because these LEDs weren't cheap and it took some time and just trial and error to getting it done. And yeah, this way I can get some of the costs back. If you want to support me, you can also buy some of the D offer boards or support me on Patreon. I will link all the source files and everything you need for this project in the video description. And yeah, thanks for watching.